Hi. So, as I mentioned in the introduction, we are at a point in the church calendar, the church year, where we are invited to look both ways, back and forth. We leave Christmas when we remember the Incarnation, the Word became flesh. We leave Christmas behind us and start looking towards Easter, the remembrance of Christ's victory over death. Now, in the life of our church, we're also at a point where it's good to look both ways. Really soon now, a new chaplain will be arriving in Liège. And Reverend Guy will start his ministry among us, and together with us, as a congregation, we will be challenged to think about where we're going. What is the vision for this church? What do we want to accomplish in the future? What kind of church do we want to be? And what kind of ministry do we want to offer the people of Liège, our community? Now, Guy, of course, will bring his own ministry into this process, his own personality, his own style. And I am sure that that will bring a new wind and a new energy with it. But as we go through that process, um, I would also encourage us to look back. Look back to what the church has been, to our roots, to our history. We remember, of course, with gratitude, the ministry of our beloved Pastor Paul and his family. We also give thanks for the support that we've uh, received in difficult days. We think of Father Brian, who is now ill. So um, I also invite you to keep him in, his, in your prayers. I also think of Heather and Yoyang. We think of Stephen and, of course, Jack, who have all blessed us with their ministry. And of course, we also think of ourselves, we, the congregation. What has the church meant to us? Why is it important to us? Why, what is it that has sustained us all this time? And um, that answers the question, what are things that we need to hold on to as we move into the future? And, and on another note, Something struck me in the news this week that also invites me to look both ways concerning the pandemic that we're in. On February 2nd, 2020, so last Tuesday, a year ago, the first patient with COVID-19 was found in Belgium. One year ago this week, the virus set foot in our country. And this prompted me to think back over the year that has passed. A year that's been really rough for many, many people, including ourselves. So many people have died. So many people are grieving. So many people have lost their livelihoods. So many people are unwell in mind or spirit because of the isolation and lockdown measures. So how do we look forward today in these circumstances? There are some rays of light, small signs of hope. For example, vaccinations that have started, at least in the West. But it's a start. But there's still a long way to go. So how do we stand at this crossroad, looking back and forth, taking the past with us into the future? Now, our readings of today also invite us to look both ways. Both John and Paul Go back to the beginning, gaze into the future, and what they have seen determines, determines their present. So let's have a quick look at those two readings. John starts his gospel by looking back. In his prologue, John explains the incarnation, the word becoming flesh which we've remembered and celebrated at Christmas. His opening words, they go as far back as the initial opening words, as they echo the first words of Genesis in the beginning. John then does not repeat the creation story, but he is telling us that Jesus, the word that became flesh, he was present then, in the beginning. And even more than being present, he brought everything into being. 
He is the source. He is the beginning. The Word who was God, who was in the beginning with God, brought everything into being. And then John goes on to look the other way. First to Good Friday. The one who was in the beginning, who was who called everything into being, came to live among us. He came to that which was his own, John says, but his own didn't recognize him. And the world did not accept him, and the darkness tried to overcome the light. John looks towards Jesus' suffering, his rejection, and his death. And then also to Easter, as he reminds us that because of Jesus' suffering, we all have now have the power to become children of God. The darkness did not overcome the light. Now, in this letter to the Colossians, Paul does a similar thing uh, as John does. He also looks back, all the way back. Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, and in him everything is created, even the things we do not see. All things, says Paul, are created through him and for him, and in him all things hold together. Paul then also looks to the Easter events, reminding the Colossians that through Jesus, God chose to reconcile everything to him and make peace through the blood of the cross. Okay, so we've heard two very eloquent and beautiful accounts of how Jesus, the eternal Son of the Father, in whom God was pleased to dwell, came to dwell among us. Why? To reconcile us to God, so we can be called children of God. Beautiful. But how does this double view of Incarnation and Easter help us today as we try to look both ways? We're trying to look to the past and to the future. Now, I'm reminded how Jack generally tells us how many points he's going to make in his sermon. Sometimes he says, I have three points for you today, or I have two points for you today. Well, I today only have one point. I want to make only one point, and that is this. The one who was there in the beginning is the one who will bring restoration. The one who will bring restoration is the one who was there in the beginning. Whether we look at the world at large, going through crisis, the life of our church, which is at a crossroads, or our own individual lives, which are insecure today, we can find hope and comfort in the truth that it is His world. Everything that has life has it because it flows from Him. It is His church, of which He is the head. And it is His children, you are one of them, that are at stake. And the one who was there in the beginning, who called it all into being, is also the one who will work out restoration, who is working out restoration. When we look into the world, we see crisis today. There's the pandemic, but it's closely re related to the environmental crisis and all the issues that, have, that go around that overpopulation, globalization, overconsumption, and irresponsible dealing with the non-human created world. It's easy to become overwhelmed by those issues. They're big global issues. But it is God's world. It's God's creation. And not only should that inspire us to do all that we can to preserve it, to take good care of it, we can also as we do that, do it in the knowledge that we are on the winning side. God will bring restoration. It is his plan and his plans don't fail. When we look at the life of our church, 
we can also find hope in the knowledge that we are playing a part in God's mission in the world. When we think about the vision for our church, we should listen well to God's word, to his spirit, and make sure that what we try to do is in line with his will. But when we do that, we can go on in the hope and faith that what we do in Liège matters because it is part of God's plan. God's plan to bring restoration to the people in our community, be it through spiritual nurturing, through outreach or mission. And then on a personal level, we also, each and every one of us, may live in the hope that he who was there in the beginning will bring restoration for you. For I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. God has a plan to restore you, you as well. By believing in his name, as John says, we can be called children of God. Through him and his blood, as Paul says, we can be reconciled. So no matter how often you stumble or fall, fall into temptation, be overcome with despair or anxiety, God's plan to bring you home will not fail. He was there in the beginning. He holds all things in his hands and he will bring restoration. So only one point to take with you this week, hope. As we look into the future with one eye on the past, the readings of today invite us to stand in the present in hope. It is God we rely on, the one who was in the beginning, the one through whom everything finds its being. So as we hope, how else do we respond? I want to go to our psalm and look at how David responds. David also was overwhelmed by God's presence in the world. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. And then he goes on to say that he sees God's touch in creation, but also he sees God is still there, sustaining it, giving it life, giving it breath, nourishment and inviting awe and David only has one response he says of course David was a musician but David's response is I will sing to the Lord as long as I live I will make music to my God while I have my being so shall my song please him while I rejoice in the Lord bless the Lord O oh my soul alleluia David realized very well that we are in good, loving hands. And the only proper response to that is worship. So I pray that all of you may be filled with the knowledge of God's love and care for you today. And that you may respond in worship through song, through prayer, through service. Amen.